So uh, two questions. One, you know, tell us a little bit more about what, what, what specifically you learned from each of these early experiences. Uh, and then secondly, if you had to do it over again, would you say, well, 12 years wandering around doing things opportunistically is too long, and if I had to do it over again, I could have done all of that learning in six years instead of 12 years. Yeah, I have no regrets, because uh, each, each, each personal journey is very different, but as an entrepreneur, I made good living through it, through that journey, and, and I was able to progress and continue to, to improve myself and, and self-learn, continue to learn and continue to, 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 to go forward. Looking back, yeah, if, if, if I have a, a million suggestions uh, in how to do it better, um, but that was my personal journey. And, um, and uh, if I go back to the, the first part of the question, um, if I think about my first, C so I, I'm a three times CPG entrepreneur, meaning I've transitioned out of uh, the first two businesses, a little bit more successfully on the second, and obviously the work I'm doing now is at a much higher profile. But uh, the fir on the first, first, first ride, I think we saw the trends, we saw the opportunity. Um, we didn't have clarity on the context on really what we were doing. So we knew we were building something that was, was, was of high quality. You know, we sold it into over 400 re retailer, re department stores all over the world. So we knew we were doing something that was good, but, but we missed the context where really the, the opportunity to build a, a scalable business was, which was much lower end of the market. What we missed was... Lower, lower end. Yeah, we had a very high profile, you know, 35 bucks shave creams and, and that, that we, we, we thought we could scale to a several hundred million dollar business, but turned out it was a much smaller opportunity because it was much niche. And we missed that point. We didn't fully realize of who we were going after. And um, uh, I wish we'd, you know, back then we built a competitive old spice maybe to, to really scale something that had the capacity to become a several hundred million dollar business. We sort of felt we hit a roof. And that's right. when I transitioned out of the business. Right. But in my second journey, it was a beverage, uh, a beverage company. And um, if you ask me what that learning curve was, I really learned about working capital and cash management uh, in a much lower profile margin business where, uh, uh, you know, uh, managing working capital became, as, as the business continued to grow exponentially, it became a very big challenge. Okay. Um, and I combined both learning and then Third time around, we created a, a, a company called Green Park, which uh, now owns five different businesses. I think I brought products for on three of them for you guys. Mm -hmm. uh, but Hippies was our first company. I think I took both learnings on on my previous two startups and really put a lot of uh, of, 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 of insight and, and work. And when we started Hippies, uh, we had the trends, and we had the opportunity, we had the context very clearly laid out. Uh, you know, if you think about we clearly recognized that better for you snacking was, I'm, I'm in the macro trend, but, but uh, the opportunity to work with, with a flower uh, it was, it was from chickpeas, beans, legumes, which are a much higher nutritional profile than uh, corn, raised, co corn, rice, uh, mm -hmm. potato chips, um, gave us sort of the baseline to, to create a better for you profile. And then we had to build, a, obviously, a big brand that was able to <coughs> scale and capture uh, consumers' hearts and minds, and uh, millennial snackers. Uh, we really started thinking about, as we thought, you know, are the modern hippies. You know, mm -hmm. they want to go to uh, uh, the, the way they think about the world and the way they sort of believe. That, that, that's really how the brand came together. And and we, our first customer uh, was Starbucks. Uh, our first customer, first investor was Starbucks, and um, and that gave us uh, an opportunity to obviously get in front of five million, five million consumers every day. And uh, mm -hmm. the business now, it's, it's, a, it's a, a fairly big startup, I would say a mid-sized food company um, that is continues to grow. Uh, I just came from a board meeting this morning and the data looks great. So we're excited about uh, our opportunity to continue to grow the company. All right. So uh, 